the only thing more ambiguous than what Biomutant was going to actually play like when we got it is what species of creature you were in the actual game. It's an angry Muppet, a deranged genetic puppet, or maybe just a MacGyvered marionette outfitted in the disused wreckage of a hundred dumpster dives. Who knows? It looked cool, though. And regardless if you think Biomutant's Trash Panda protagonist is actually cool looking or not, you have to give it to any developer that says, hey, we're going to mix Watership Down, Mouse Guard, Rats and Nim, and Devil May Cry all into one thing and see how it goes. There's a reason mules are infertile. Even nature has a limit of inspirations before it's like, no, nope, I'm out. Did Biomutant actually end up that way? Well, let's see. The game's brought to you by the aptly named Experiment 101. It comes out on May 25th on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC in retail versions as well as EA Play Pro's subscription service, Day One. Let's see how it goes. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. First, let's break this down a bit. Biomutant, when you jump in, is an open-world third-person action RPG. A kung fu fable with the entire stable of characters looks like bipedal sword-carrying rat bat cat freak shows with a penchant for piecing together weapons and armor from other people's dumpsters and then beating each other to death with them right afterwards. And speaking of enemies, yours are some of the members of the six other tribes of animals, most of whom are split down the center in how they want to save the world after an ecological disaster. But it opens up a bit like a smaller Zelda, a bit like Ratchet and Clank thrown in and maybe some Darksiders when it comes to the influence on puzzles and some of the movement. It stretches out those influences as you move past the small cave system just after the first tutorial battle and explore more openly and bust out them getaway sticks and just spring through a world of animal-on-animal -animal hybrids. Biomutant starts to show off a beauty as well as a stark contrast compared to many other open-world games. And in many ways, Biomutant looks better than a lot of them. Those locations are meted out in a somewhat expected styling of zones. We have the open world snowy area, your swamps, your deserts, and lush flatlands with swaying grass, as well as choked forests and subterranean complexes still churning away with mysterious goals from forgotten designers. There are multiple times when Biomutant is hitting on all cylinders, whether you're thundering down a muddy broken road in your high school shop class mech, taking out enemies with your Gatling gun, spitting out the tunes that are all in the DEA and D chords, or you leap onto the back of, well, something, a mixture of Viva Pinata and a horse that had the worst genetics ever. Everything in Biomutant is just twisted enough to offer a very unique feel. This carries over to enemies that can look one part terrifying and one part like their entire family tree was a single dead branch. That design is top notch to me. I love things that are slightly askew like that, and it steps out of the everyone has to be amazing and cool looking design we get in some other games and seems like the designers were able to stretch their legs a bit. There is just always something over the hill. Not necessarily an enemy, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now, in some ways, all of this beauty is replicated in the combat when you find a group of enemies staked out at an abandoned house and their faces look like 40 bags of hot nickels and you swing in there. Now, depending on the weapons that you have, dual wield, two-handed, single guns, it can all look very cool, outfitted with bio skills as well, and you can unleash huge area of effect damages like frozen spikes, poison, choking green gas that envelops a screen, or slide out of the way, then flip back in and grab an enemy and spin pile drive them into the earth. And that pile driver would look even cooler if it didn't screw up half of the time. Let me talk about some of the problems here. Lots of the attacks are canned. They can happen even if you have no enemy. It's like a kid trying to finish a song that got interrupted at a Christmas play and everyone just wants them to move on. Not Biomutant. Your little creature just leaps into the air and pile drives absolutely fucking nobody as the enemies look on. And sure, they're the graphical equivalent of the sound, doo -doo -doo, but it would be better if they actually attacked you while all this was happening. And there's a distinct feeling in this game of too many chefs in the kitchen, especially when it comes to gamers feedback, HUD, and how it's all reflected. When you jump into the inventory and upgrade screens, there's a slightly different graphical look. It's a sort of a mess, almost a mobile style to everything, a disconcerting distraction of icons that represent attributes and resistances, weapon types, armor types, within armor types, various upgrade types, and more, but many times not even on the same screen. And for me, that predominant visual overload and mismatch became prevalent pretty quickly. What's also prevalent is the noticeable grass and secondary layer of detail pop in that the world has regardless of the settings. This doesn't ruin anything, but it's noticeable enough you wonder why they didn't handle that with a bit more fluidity. Especially when you realize much of the game world is just a vast, empty nothing. Enemies are usually stationed in some locations, but going a long time without seeing an enemy is completely normal and not really backed up by any narrative or gameplay chops to keep you interested. The Zen style gamer, of which I am, you'll probably find yourselves right at home, but it is worth discussing. Also, while some of the smaller towns look nice, most of the bigger locations have an incredibly sparse, almost unfinished look to them. This includes the main rooms of most of the tribes, which look like somebody made that part of the game and then just forgot to return 
return to it. Of course, open worlds and long draw distances and flashy combat don't always equal good performance. We're going to talk about that. Now on the PC, you got an i7 and 2080 Ti and you still really can't get locked out at 4K60 on all the settings on high. It was close but no cigar. It went up and down. Most of the time it was above, but then it would drop. Setting a couple settings down, it did actually end up locking a 60. Now, this is going to depend on your systems, your drivers, and of course, any patches that are coming in hot for the game. Render scaling is here as well as automatic resolution. And I'll tell you right now, I found out that render scale just worked better than automatic resolution, which resulted in almost a frame by frame blurring, which I think we could expect. It's true, Biomutant has its issues. I've covered it here and I'll cover it in a bit, but man, at times the game is just straight up gorgeous. Its scale of interaction and familiarity do not match Zelda. Its sense of danger at every turn that most Ubisoft games reflect is not up to that level. But my God, there is a really cool feeling of exploration if you're a Zen style player. And for a lot of the times, the game's gorgeous. Now let's talk a little bit about gameplay and the story because that's gonna make you wanna continue running through these fields of, well, empty grass. Biomutant is a post-apocalyptic fairy tale, if that's even possible, with you taking on the guise of a genetically enhanced animal. First, you choose the breeds, which are sort of like races in other games, adjusting the overall look and make and some alterations to your damage, magic level, and so on. You've got your Primal, your Dum Dum, your Healy, your Fip, and a couple others. They overlap. Make sure to look closely at what each one adjusts and what you want from the general look of your character. Also, trust me, while Charisma in most games is as useful as a two-peckered puppy and Bio-Mutant, it can pay off in huge rewards. I'll talk about that in a second. Next up, you adjust your core attributes. These are using a typical weighted star system between strength, agility, intelligence, charisma, vitality, and that will all round out the way the character looks. You also choose a breed's resistances, and these are very important in the game between freezing, ice poison, and radiation. All are heavily used in the title, not only by enemies as attacks, but entire sections of land, so be aware of that. And lastly, you pick a class. There's been a lot of discussion about this. You've got things like Deadeye, Commando, Cyfreak, Saboteur, Sentinel, as well as Mercenary if you have the pre-ordered DLC. These give you a couple skills and sort of an idea of the general way a character might be played. After all that, you're pretty much in the game. There's a series of small tutorials. These are going to run you through things like blocking and dodging and attacking and basic combos. This is one place where you start to notice Biomutant has a bunch of issues. The game has systems on top of systems on top of systems, which many times don't have very good tutorials to explain them or explain their interaction with each other. So sometimes there's hours into the game and you're thinking, why is this one thing doing this? Or what exactly is supposed to happen here? It happens more than once. And it shows that the game probably went through some growing pains when it came to how the depth of those systems were gonna interact throughout its development. Also, and this is prevalent throughout, while the graphics are excellent and the world itself at least at first, is interesting during exploring, which you get more and more skills to augment, like magic mushrooms that you can use to dynamically leap higher, or a kite to glide throughout the game world for long jumps. The game is just not very alive. And that really can hurt it. It is at its best when it's flights of fancy. We're placing the fancy with fantasy. Outfitted a kid of countless odds and ends, a post-apocalyptic assault on the senses in armor form. I love that. A genetically enhanced rodent, bits and pieces of trash cans, old Campbell's soup containers, and a toilet brush in your hand for a mace. That, to me, were the best parts of the game. But where in Ubisoft game, they sort of regale themselves in the sense of violence. Where picking 20 violets from a polite countryside means you are no farther than 20 feet from someone you can kick the shit out of or something that wants to kick shit out of you. Biomutant went so drastically in the other direction, it can make all those systems and all the combos and all the skills you get feel almost wasted. This comes up more when the enemies are in battle. They're just standing in place a lot of times at buildings waiting for you, and they don't really do anything until you trigger them, feeling a little bit like the old GoldenEye game. Also, there are many times when enemies of various groups like tribes and monsters are fighting before you arrive, which I love. It did make it feel a little bit more alive, but of course, the moment you step in, yeah, they're pretty much all against you. And that hurts the game because that AI just isn't really there even when they are all attacking you. Most enemies are pretty easy to defeat. Also in combat, while you have the basic moves as well as unlocks for various powers you can hotkey, as well as unlock combos that you can get for the various weapon types, like I stated before, combos and skills and powers, they work well enough and they're hot tab to the direction pads or the F keys. But the real issue is even after upgrading them, they never really flow together perfectly. It's not because of the 
lack of lock-in. The game doesn't really have a lock-in. It's got sort of a soft aim kind of situation. It's that the combos are just fairly shallow, and instead, it feels like each doesn't actually build into the other. Some weapons and some weapon combos will work better than others, which I'm going to talk about balancing in a second. I liked some of the up-close iron fist moves, as well as the dual-handed sword. I thought that was awesome. But overall, a lot of people are going to have some issues here, I think. Now, when you meet other characters and you go into tribes' locations, you sometimes have the chance to learn more Wung Fu techniques from characters or see flashbacks of the story, which are both interesting and certainly do add to that growing list of things that you can buy and upgrade in the game. Now, speaking of upgrading after getting experience for quests or killing enemies, this opens up a huge amount of possible trajectories from biogenetics. These are basically spells that in some way usually mimic living creatures, spit and poison, using a chemical mix to light fires behind you or freezing enemies. Actually, I don't remember the last time a creature in real life froze an enemy, but you get my point. Also, the weapons themselves, you either get access to the ones that you've collected and are too high of a level, which isn't actually that often, or you get new combos for those that you have. There's a lot to parse, and it could use some editing, especially when it comes to the different points and where they're used, upgrading different parts between psi points and bio points, and just upgrading stuff overall. There is a lot there. And that's not even adding in the resistances of which there's like cold and heat or poison as well that require you to not only check your normal armor, but also have resistances that they may offer. The game allows for you to hotkey a number of unique clothing sets so you can make a set for a different locations if you need to. Resistances and clothing, I like the crafting section of the game though, that is where the depth is. I love it, you can leap in, you can make weapons of various kinds out of all the crap you find in the game. They all have different stats, each building up from the base of the weapon itself. It has that apocalypse chic kind of design with stop sign parts shaved down to sharp triangles and bolted onto swords. I think some people are gonna look at some of the weapons and hate the design or think it just doesn't look like it'd be useful. I I love it. Statistics wise, they adjust a ton of stuff depending on each piece. And while the game is pretty strict on what parts can be used on what type of guns, there's a bit more flexibility when it comes to the hand to hand weapons. I felt you can also upgrade items that you found in particular locations later in the game. You can buy and sell items at store vendors. And that's when that damned charisma stat pays off so much. Kudos to the Biomutant devs for making charisma a thing in a game. It is huge. First, you have various skills and items that can improve your loot drop rates as normal. And in this game, there's a shit ton, but some amazing pieces are actually at the vendors. And even while selling items that you have, those can be costly up until mid game to end late game. So a higher charisma lets you get in and jump into some of those with a very pronounced reduced price, letting you experience them far more or far more often. And speaking of slick talking and charisma based characters, as you talk to the different tribes and you decide if you want to save the world tree or destroy it, you start to make choices in a rough light and dark system. Now, I like to think myself as a pretty good person. Hell, sometimes I even cook pork chops and pork rinds, you know, to return the skin. But the quests here, other than the main ones, never really bring that story or the highlights of your moral choices to the forefront. This is compounded by the game feeling unbalanced when it comes to weapon types. And this is absolutely noticeable. As I said, crafting Awesome. Beating someone to death with a mace made of toilet plungers doesn't get old, but what does is feeling like the game just solidly said, you know, guns are pretty much going to be the way to go. Really, due to the combat, the dodge and parry system never being as slick as it probably should be when it comes to control, the guns become a massive bump in the damage curve. Noticeable, especially due to the lack of enemies and that ability to kite them forever and really not worry about getting other enemies to combine. It's a problem. And as I said, if you want to risk dying to just say, I'm going to make sure that this game requires me to be the best blocking and parrying sensation I can possibly be, you could do that. But poorly made guns in this game still ruin enemies as long as you have one of each damage type. This is reflective of the game's poor enemy AI, which is nothing if not resolutely steadfast in its desire to die by running straight at you, as well as the fact there ain't a lot of them. And speaking of not a lot, let's talk about sound. Seriously, there's almost no, well, there's some environmental, it's, it's fine, it's a bit lean, but the various hit effects that you hear when you're playing and you're attacking people, that mixing is all 
over the place. It never feels right. Sometimes when the voices come into the mix, they're super low. Worse are some of the weapons just sounding bad. Their hit effects, their impacts, and just general presence in the game are muted, if not completely generic. While some of the environmental sounds do play out a little bit, like I said, or when the dynamic weather changes, they ultimately all get lost in a jumble of generic bang, bang, boom, ba sounds as you attack. Not good sound. But is the voice good? So probably no one in the world is going to have a middle ground on this. You're either going to love it or hate it. Characters in the game world talk like they do in a lot of RPGs, fully in their own alien voice. But instead of a text subtitle, you have translation from the narrator as well. Like a childhood story, it tells you what they say. First, I am actually fine with that. Yes, he talks a lot because there's always something he's saying about the game world or what you're doing or not doing or could be doing or you're meeting or not meeting. Fine, I get that. It didn't bother me. What did, though, is that the writing seemed off almost all the time. Off enough that I thought this was going to be part of the game's plot. There is a lot of almost repetitive statements and moments and ploys used in the conversation that don't fit anyone, and they really stand out as a negative. Lastly, we have music. This is hit and miss as well. I like to number the tracks they play out, like the first combat music when you're fighting the enemy, the wonky mump, or just running or riding around the game world. Those are all good but they're pretty much filler. They don't really stand out and they don't really make themselves known, even in the flashbacks. It's standard fantasy fare, but it really does lack an edge or identify itself and would make you say, oh man, I remember that. That's Biomutant soundtrack if you say heard it on Spotify. There's just nothing there of that kind. And how does all this come together for fun factor? Biomutant was very fun, but when it is not it's a slog. Make no mistake, what waits inside of this game is an incredibly complex series of systems. It belies the honestly almost loose and absent-minded combat that you are going to feel as you play. You have these level-up systems. You explore more. You have all this crafting. Those are great. But then you have these weird side quests that I'd be lying if I said I remembered almost any of them. The game could do with more enemies and battles and just randomly, which I can't believe I'm actually saying, but seriously, it's that devoid of encounters for a long period of time. It could have had better quest writing and reactions to what you do in the game world as well. Even making choices for which tribe to follow and who you like. It feels like the game gives you a thousand choices. The combat is fun. It's also frustrating. You have these combos and the crafting, the various weapons you can wield. You can do a massive amount of flexibility on how a person wants to play. But in the end, it always feels like you're noticing some particular weapons are just godsend versus others. Some games punch above their weight, whether by sheer tenacity, hard-coded excellence in their design, or some other facet they reflect in that polis and presentation above their origins. Biomutant's a bit like an Instagram filter for a game. It just depends on how closely you look for what is actually going on. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system. This is a wait. If you can get it on EA Play Pro, then I say go for it if you already have it, of course, because at full price, I think there's some fixes that need to happen, not only in the way the combat works, but in some of the balancing for the weapons. Also, if you are a Zen gamer, one who doesn't mind long trips for short combat bits, this might actually be more on your radar. Just don't expect tight combat whenever you have it, whether it be bosses or the side characters. A recipe isn't just ingredients. It's how those separated elements are mixed, how they're used, and what quality. Otherwise, it's just a table with some shit lying on it waiting to be cooked. And that is definitely the way Biomutant feels a lot of the times. I also feel that a review should be a series of answers to the questions that a game tasks you with when you experience it, not static answers being cross-checked prior to playing. At some point, you may ask yourself, well, what is Biomutant? There's a very good chance when you finish the game, you will ask yourself, well, what is Biomutant? And I think that speaks volumes. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the review. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. I'd love for you to check out Twitter and Patreon. You guys know I have a bunch of different podcasts. I'm also, of course, on Patreon. It helps if you guys jump in. I would love for you to do it. Regardless if you end up playing this game or not, make sure to make the world's ugliest puppy of a character. I love that in this title. It's very cool to make your character in this game. Peace out.